Hello everybody. In this video we will cover how to set up the tools needed for this course as well as explain the reason for each tool. In total we will only be using three tools during this course. Our first tool will be a web browser which will allow us to display the web pages we build. In this course I will be using Google Chrome for all examples and projects but any major web browser such as Firefox or Edge will work. I would however recommend using Chrome in order to follow the course as exactly as possible. A download link for Chrome is in the description below. Second, we will need a text editor to write our HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files in. While most courses say to use something like Notepad or TextMate, I recommend using Visual Studio Code. Notepad and TextMate are very basic text editors that offer no extra functionality, while Visual Studio Code is a text editor developed specifically for web development. This means Visual Studio Code is packed with features specifically geared towards web development. As we progress in this course, we will explore many of the great features Visual Studio Code has to offer, but for now, go to the link in the description and download Visual Studio Code. Lastly, we will need to install Git, which is a version control system. Git lets us save changes to our code as different versions, which we can swap between at any time with ease. Git also makes it incredibly easy for multiple people to work on the same project at the same time by allowing us to merge both people's changes easily. Git is not necessary in order to learn the basics of web development, but it is used by nearly every web development company. On top of Git, we will be using GitHub. GitHub is a website that lets you store the different versions of your code. GitHub is by far the most popular website to be used with Git and is again used by almost every web development company. Setting up these technologies can be a bit tricky at first, but after the initial setup everything runs incredibly smoothly. First you will need to download Git from the link in the description. After that, go to GitHub's website and create an account. Next we need to link our GitHub account to Git. To do this, we will utilize the terminal if you are on Mac or Linux, and if you are on Windows, you will need to use git bash, which comes with git. With your terminal window open, enter the following commands. Make sure to use your GitHub username and email when entering these commands. If you are not comfortable with the terminal, enter the following command into your terminal. This will make it so that when you commit your changes to git, it will open Visual Studio for you to enter a message instead of using the terminal. Right now, your git and github accounts are linked and you can start submitting code to GitHub, but there's a slight problem. Every time you want to submit anything to GitHub, it'll force you to type in your password. This doesn't seem like much of a problem, but will become incredibly annoying as you use Git more. In order to get around this, we'll be setting up your GitHub account with an SSH key. In order to do this, we will need to create a private and public SSH key and give GitHub the public key. After this is done, each time you submit information to GitHub, it'll check the public key against your private key in order to verify that it is you sending the request, instead of making you enter a password. First, we need to check if you have any SSH keys already generated. To do this, enter in the following command into the terminal. If you do not see a file name ending in .pub, or you receive an error saying that the SSH folder does not exist, then you will need to create an SSH key. To create an SSH key, enter the following command, making sure you to use your GitHub email. This command will prompt you multiple times to enter information but the default values are just fine for us, so hit enter until the key is generated. Next, we will need to copy the key in order to give it to GitHub by running this command. If you already had an SSH key, then make sure to use the file name of your .pub file in place of the IDRSA file. Also, make sure you enter the correct command depending on which operating system you are on. Now go to GitHub and log in. In the top right corner, click on your profile icon and select settings from the dropdown. After the settings page loads, click SSH and GBG keys, and lastly, click the Add SSH key button. Inside of the title box, enter any title that you want, such as My Computer, and then paste the key that we copied earlier into the key box. Congratulations! You are now set up with Git and GitHub. In order to test your setup, enter this command into your terminal. You should be greeted with a message that says that you have successfully authenticated. If you do not receive this message, then refer to GitHub's official documentation on setting up your SSH key. It will be linked in the description below. This concludes all of the setup we will need for this project. In the next video, we will discuss the details of how web pages work.